you're coaching Michigan. It's your dream job. Have you thought about walking down this tunnel as the head coach, not the assistant? You, you know, not probably not yet. You, you know, with you right now, now I'm starting to think about it. You know, we're eight days out from playing uh, Western and opening up. So, yeah, you think about it. You think about, you know, when you come back up after warm-ups, the band, you know, they're getting ready to come out, they're lining the walls. And, you know, it, it's just exciting. How about the thought and the feeling, and I don't know whether you have it, of the guys that have preceded you, the Schembechlers, the Yosts, the Chryslers, the Cars, the Molers. Talk to me about that and that you're filling their shoes. Well, yeah, and that's humbling, you know, and that's uh, a real privilege, Jim. And, and, you know, you want to make them proud because of what they've done for the history and tradition of Michigan football. So that's what we, you know, it's exciting, but we got to worry about those 115 kids. Have you thought about walking into the sunlight, 103, 105,000, the band out there, the victors going on? Uh, not yet, you know, <laughs> it really isn't. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's going to be a, a, an unbelievable feeling, but that's got to go away quickly because we got work at hand. It's got to be a special day for you, and yet I know your deal is it's about the players. Yep. No question. It's all about the players. That's your focus. Right. And well, it's about those players on that team, uh, Team 132, and it's about those teams that came before. And first and foremost, it's about Michigan. It's Brady Hoke's first year at Michigan as their head coach. Stay with us. A new season of Inside Michigan Football is coming up next. Inside Michigan Football is brought to you in part by AT&T. Let the debate end here. AT&T is the nation's fastest broadband network. AT&T, rethink possible. By Abso Pure Water, delivering quality bottled water since 1908. And by the University of Michigan Health System and uofmhealth.org. Proud to be the official health care provider of Michigan athletics. So now that we have all the emotional stuff out of the way and coming out of the tunnel, let's talk turkey. All right. And uh, let's start on the defensive side of the ball. Sure. Everybody last year was very disappointed. I know when you came in, you saw the stats and had to say this can't be true. That was the side of the ball that I think most people felt needed the most work. How are you at this point a week away from kicking it off? Well, you know, we really had a good uh, spring. You know, I think the guys learned a lot, got to – uh, put your, your, your plan in as far as 4-3 defense, what we want to do with it, different looks and all that. But I really think, you know, through the course of uh, fall camp, you, you, we've emerged a little bit. I think we've moved the dial. I think uh, guys are doing a good job when you look at uh, their responsibility and doing their job. So I think we're, we're moving forward. Has it been even across the board too, defensive front, linebacker, or secondary, or is there one area that you're looking at going, you know, they're, they're better than I thought they were when we came in, or, you know, these guys can be really good. What, where are you on those three areas? Well, I think in the secondary first, I think, uh, especially at the corner position, you know, I, I think Troy Wolfolk and uh, JT Floyd both have come back from injuries, uh, have given us great competition with Courtney Avery and Greg Brown and two of the young kids, uh, Blake Countess and uh, Raymond Taylor. I think they all are are pushing. I think there's great competition there. I think it's safety. We, we need to have, uh, uh, you know, a little more. I think Kovacs has done a really tremendous job, Jordan has, of being a leader out there. I think Thomas Gordon's a guy who had a great summer and has had a great camp thus far. So I think we've got a lot of good competition back there that makes us better. And you got some young kids playing linebacker, don't you? Oh, we do. You know, there's a good chance Desmond Morgan, a young kid, uh, uh, true freshman, is going to play some. Uh, you know, you, you, you like how the competition at that has gone on when you 
look at the guys who have played a lot of football here, you know, J.B. Fitzgerald and his leadership and how he's helped young guys out, uh, Mike Jones, uh, Brandon Hawthorne, uh, 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 Brandon Heron. You know, there's a lot of different guys that we've had in the mix in there, but I think uh, Kenny Demons coming back uh, has been a real plus for us. So we're working in that manner. Are the key guys up front your triumvirate, uh, Martin, Rowe, and Van Bergen? Well, I, I think you can start there, but I think Jabril Black has done some really good things. I think Will Campbell, we, we've kind of put him in a lot of different positions and, and as a three or a one, and, and I think Will's uh, improved, you know, especially the last two and a half weeks. Uh, Will Heiniger's a guy, uh, uh, the guy who kind of came out from spring and really uh, has done a good job in fall camp is Nathan Brink, and uh, he's kind of a wild card in the deal, but he plays with great leverage and plays with a lot of toughness, and uh, he's a little undersized, but uh, you can tell he's got a passion to play the game. To get a little bit more specific about the defense, let's talk. The defensive coordinator, Greg Madison. We're getting closer, you know, we're getting closer. Thank goodness we have seven more days, you know, but uh, we'll be ready. You know, they're working very hard to get there. Are you getting a sense for what kind of defense this might be? Yeah, I think I, I know what we can be, and, and uh, I guess you won't know until you get that first game under your belt. But I, I know there's there's signs every practice of what we want to be, and that's an aggressive, uh, uh, get-after-it type defense, and it plays with great effort. And they do that at times. We have to do it with more consistency. One of the things, if you get the sense of it, talking to the defensive coaches and the defensive players, is you really have put a physical attitude out there with this team defensively, but I'm sure it translates to offense too. Well, that's how you have to play the game. You know, you got to have tough-minded guys who are going to be mentally tough and physically tough, and that's always been a trademark of Michigan football uh, overall. But, you know, we play in a physical conference, and you got to play uh, a tough man style of football. And, and I think, you know, when I look at the guys and how they've developed and, you know, the defensive staff, you know, Greg obviously coordinating it and Kurt Mallory and Mark Smith and Jerry Montgomery, we all have the same mindset, and I think we've made some real strides now you know we've got 12 guaranteed tests ahead of us now we got to see where we're at now Greg Madison talks about hey we're gonna play Michigan defense can you define that I think I know what it is and I know that you agree with him that there is a quote-unquote Michigan defense what is that well I think it starts up front with how that front seven plays together and how physical uh, you attack the line of scrimmage and take the line of scrimmage. And then I, I think the other part, and maybe even bigger part, is getting 11 helmets on the football. And uh, that's one thing that we've got to stress all the time. And that, that goes into gym, you know, pursuit angles and all those things. Who's forcing the ball in and a lot of the schematic things that happen. But it's an effort and an intensity you play defense and with. This you bring to this program from when you were an assistant coach. Because in 97, I'll never forget. There was a film, I don't know whether we were playing Iowa or something, where somebody gets knocked down or tripped up. And at the end of the play, there were 11 hats right on the pile. Right. And that's what you're looking for. Oh, there's no question. You know, uh, uh, there's 11 uh, places on a body, a human body for a helmet. And so we want to get all 11 guys there. And we want guys who are going to play uh, reckless, abandoned kind of defense as we're pursuing to the football. I can't wait. And yet we've still got more to talk about, including the offense, which should be explosive and interesting. So stay with us. That's next on Inside Michigan Football. When lack of sleep... You know, one of the big questions coming into this season was the offense, the change in the offense. How's Denard Robinson going to handle it? Well, I think Denard Robinson is going to handle it pretty well. To find out how he feels about it, let's go to our Doug Karsh. One of the biggest stories this fall with the Michigan football team is the development of Denard Robinson. Michigan fans will see the results Saturday against Western Michigan. The junior signal caller is being asked to adapt his game to a more pro-style offense. He's also now clearly the leader of this Wolverine offense, but think back to September 5th, 2009, also against Western Michigan, late in the first quarter when Shoelace made his debut. It ended so spectacularly, but got off to a rocky start. 
You know, he was a little wide-eyed, you know, he was uh, maybe a little bit nervous. He was nervous, he was stuttering, he was, you know, he, he had that never smile about him. And my eyes was big, everybody was like, what's wrong with you, just calm down, it's going to be alright, it's just like practice. Hughie said he looked even a little scared the first time he was in the huddle, is that true? No doubt about it. <laughs> no doubt about it. And if he tells you differently, he's lying. <laughs> I actually couldn't, couldn't, I couldn't say anything, I couldn't even talk about him though. So I was like, I said, ah! Nobody heard me. He didn't say the cadence loud enough, so we all jumped off sides. Kev was like, well, you got to speak up. Everybody was like, Mo was like, you got to speak up because we can't hear you. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I got to man up and call it loud enough, all right? So I called it loud enough. And I'm like, all right, all right. I said, ah! Right. And I forget to play. Robinson drops the snap. I right, picked the ball up. I'm like, what, what are we going to do with the ball? I'm like, all right, let's go run. Let's do what, do what you got to do. Picks it up, runs right. He dodges one man, steps out of a tackle to the 40, cuts back inside, 35-30, puts on the Jets. He's gone! Denard Robinson, his first run from quarterback in a Michigan uniform. And well, that play was certainly indicative of what was to come from Denard Robinson in terms of pure excitement. Al Borges, offensive coordinator, and the rest of the staff are working on developing Denard Robinson as a more well-rounded quarterback. His teammates see that in the huddle and once the ball is snapped. Any side of pressure, I was just out of there. I had to run. You know, I was just going to make a play by myself instead of using my teammates. Now it's like I got the big O in front of me, the big offensive line, and, and they, got, they got time. They make time for me. So and I got big receivers and running backs to block and running backs to carry the ball. So it's just like, let's go out there and have fun. Now when he's in the huddle, he, I mean, other than I really can't understand him sometimes because of his Florida, Florida twang, he's calm, he's relaxed, he's, he's confident. And he knows what he can do on the field. Before, where I was just coming in the huddle, like, eyes wide and like, all right, guys, uh, let's try to make something happen. <laughs> he, he's improved a lot, you know, obviously on his skills, but he's the same old guy, you know, same old happy-go-lucky guy that uh, competes really hard. He, he has a huge drive to win. But now it's like, all right, we're going to the huddle, we're having fun, and we everybody just smiling in the huddle. We just, we know we're out there, we can do what we can do. Just a simple check down. I mean, he's not always going for the big play now. He understands that. The drive can go on. It doesn't have to be uh, one play and out touchdown. He he will take down to the uh, the lesser pass and will uh, play to play another down. And I can step into the throat now and uh, just put it on Junior or Martavis or Tree or Kelvin. So it's just like man, it's a big difference. At the beginning, you couldn't make all the throws. Oh no, oh no. I was just falling off throws and uh, not stepping to them like I was supposed to. So it's a big difference now, man. For Inside Michigan Football, I'm Doug Karsh. Clearly, Denard Robinson is the focal point of your offense. I mean, he comes into this season as the defending Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. Sure. How's he handled this quote-unquote change of your offensive coordinator, Al Bordress, to be more of a under-the-center quarterback? And yet he's still going to play some shotgun, right? Well, there's no question. You know, we're going to, you know, uh, Al Borges is a very smart man. And uh, when you have a guy who's a playmaker like Denard and you can you can fit in some things that uh, really uh, uh, showcase some of those skills without getting him beat up uh, in, in the course of a football game, a course of a season. And, and Al, we definitely will run some of the things that he's run in the past. But, you know, Denard's had a really, really good fall camp. I think the growth that he's made from spring to the fall has been outstanding. The other thing that uh, has been going on and been in the newspapers and been a focus of attention has been the running back. That nobody sure. has really stepped up. And you want to use one guy to take 15 or 20 carries to become a feature back. Has that happened yet, or are you still looking for that one guy? Well, you know, I think right now Mike Shaw has kind of uh, uh, stepped over the line a little bit. You know, I still think uh, uh, Fitz is, is a, a tremendous back. Fitz I think, Tucson? Yep, and I think Hopkins uh, has had a, a pretty good uh, fall camp. And then Vincent Smith. I mean, he's a guy that in third downs, you know, uh, pound for pound, he may be one of the toughest guys on this football team, and he has a great energy, loves the game loves his teammates and he'll be a guy that will utilize also. Uh, the other thing is is that you come in with again a receiving core that's got experience and I think one guy that doesn't get talked about enough for postseason or is Junior Hemingway. Right. This guy seems like he's been here forever but he keeps making big plays and he looks like he's doing it this fall. Well I think uh, Junior's had a real good camp and, and just not out on the field but I'm real proud of Junior's leadership within the football team. You know, we uh, 
want our seniors to lead, and he truly has been a guy who stepped out, and, and I'm excited to see his senior year. Who else will be catching that ball? Who are, when you go three and four wide, because I know right. Coach Borges is going to do that. Well, you know, obviously, uh, uh, Roy Roundtree is a guy who's got a lot of experience, uh, uh, has done a good job. Martavius Odoms is a, a guy who plays in the slot, and uh, he, he's a guy who can make a lot of things. I think Jeremy Gallon has had a tremendous fall camp. I think he's grown and matured as a football player. Uh, you know, Jeremy Jackson's a guy who we can count on uh, uh, and does a good job with what he's doing. So uh, there's about five or the seven guys in there that we're really going to look to. The guys that I love the best, the guys up front. And you've got, you know, four of the five coming back. You only need one replacement at left guard. Right. Talk to me about how that group has come together. You may have a little worry about depth, but overall, you like those guys up front? Well, I do, I, and, and really the depth is the one key issue that uh, we have on both sides of the ball up front. But, you know, uh, Taylor Lewand and, and Ricky Barnum and, and David Mulk and Patrick Omame and uh, Mark Hugie are all guys who are very solid, uh, very good football players, and, and they have a lot of pride, and I think as a unit, they really show those things. I think uh, <clears throat> Michael Schofield is a guy who has come on. You know, we we need to really have seven to eight guys when you look at what you're doing uh, as a football team and how you want to survive a season. Sounds great, offense and defense. When we come back, we'll talk more about this Michigan football team as they get ready for their opener against Western. Stay with us. More inside Michigan football coming right up now. Welcome back to Inside Michigan Football. Well, the Wolverines this past Friday had a full team dress rehearsal. Game uniforms, full pads, scoreboards and everything to get ready for their game in the opener against Western Michigan. It feels great to be back in this stadium. You know, every time we in here, you know, we know what it's about. And it's, uh, it's an exciting feeling. I can't wait to be in here on the third. Been grinding in camp and we finally got to get in here and see, you know, the experience of a lifetime. And, Thank God that we go here because we get to play and practice here, so that was a good thing. Find yourself self, uh, looking up at those scoreboards and checking them out. Yeah, I was actually sitting down after I got done coming off my Sears, and I was actually watching it, and it was like HD, so I'm loving it. <laughs> How do you think the defense played today? Uh, I think we're always improving. We keep improving every day, and uh, you know, even if it's little things that you can't see, you know, we're improving. You think as a team you're more intense when you're in the stadium as opposed to practice? Uh, always. When you're in the big house, you got to bring an intensity that is like no other. The offense, you know, we did some things well. There's uh, obviously some things that we have to work on, and, you know, we have another week to prepare and be excited coming up for next weekend. Uh, I think we did okay. We can get better. It's a little kinks now and there. So, you know, just main focus is this week, game week. Like Coach said, that would be flawless, so we got to have be on point on everything. You notice some of the young guys wide-eyed? Yeah, I mean, that kind of – did good to out here today. I, when I first came out here, I saw some of the young cornerbacks, who were, like you said, wide-eyed. But they just got over the big stadium and were able to play good. Blake, um, you know, he was like, man, this is this is crazy. I was like, yeah, this is crazy now. Wait till this stadium is packed <laughs> come September 3rd, so I know he can't wait. This is where the magic happens. We talk a lot of offense. We talk a lot of defense. And there are concerns and there are credits on both sides of the ball. The other side of the ball is that special teams that nobody wants to talk about. And yet last year was a real problem in your placement kicking. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about where that is right now as you head into your first game. Right. Well, you know, I think Brandon Gibbons has really had a nice fall camp and he's been very consistent with what he's doing. I think Matt Wilde, a young guy coming in that uh, was recruited. I think uh, uh, Seth uh, Brookhausen in the punting and Matt in the punting have done a nice job. Uh, uh, I think we made strides. We're still not going to name a guy as of today, but there's a lot of good things and a lot of great competition. And I think one of the things that's helped is they've come over here and kicked a lot during fall camp. You know, we've had uh, someone bring them over so that they could get out here and kick in this environment, even though there's not 110,000 people, but you're kicking in the stadium. And I think that's important. So here's the question. Have you put the pressure on them in practice? Have you stood oh, yeah. there and said, okay, we're down two. There's seven seconds left. If you kick it, we leave and go in. If we don't, we run gassers. Oh, Have yeah, there's that? no question. I mean, you <laughs> always got to put that, that pressure on them. And in fact, uh, uh, we'll, we'll put a little more on them today, so it's going to be fun. 
the other thing is we haven't talked a lot about Western Michigan. No. Uh, they come in as a pretty good Western Michigan team, pretty good MAC team. Right. Um, they're not going to be that sacrificial lamb, are they? Well, they never are. I mean, number one, you know, I coached against Bill Cubitt an awful lot, and his teams are always physical. They're always tough. They they play uh, 60 minutes of football, and, and uh, he, he's a tremendous coach, and I have so much respect for him that, you know, this is a, a big venue, obviously, but uh, being a MAC coach and being a MAC player, I know what the mindset's going to be. When you're standing on the sideline, what's that one thing that you want to see happening during the game where you say, okay, feel good about this, we're, we're where we need to be, uh, rather than that point of an, oh, no. Sure. Talk to me about what that is in that opener. Well, you know, we want to have a physicalness and a discipline as a football team and we want to be physical on both fronts and we want to play with a tempo as a team you know a defense having some urgency to getting set up in an offense that is has got a great tempo to it you know as they move the football and possess the ball we've got to have great ball security you know the last three years we were minus 32 in turnover margin and and we can't do that we've got to take care of the football We've got to be a team that plays 60 minutes of football together. And that's something that, as a team, we talk about every day. Brady, great first show. Thanks. I look forward to 13 more of them. All right, Jim. Thank you. And we hope you join us for each and every one of them right here on Inside Michigan Football. Inside Michigan Football is brought to you in part by AT&T. Let the debate end here. AT&T is the nation's fastest broadband network. AT&T. Rethink. Only on 7.